Hello everybody, this is Bob Ferguson with Fascinature. Today I want to provide to you a crash course of all of the native snakes to my home state, Pennsylvania, for World Snake Day. This video is meant to be a guide for the general public. Uh, it's going to have very simple information in it that can be used for either entertainment purposes or if you're just interested in snakes or as a resource for you to come back to, say if you find a snake in the field and you're not sure of what it is. A few quick things of note here. One of the most commonly asked questions I get is, will it bite? First of all, anything with a mouth can potentially bite you. That said, as we run through the species of snakes, I will do my best to provide to you the temperament that these snakes give towards human or have towards humans in my 20 years of experience. Number two, this is meant to be a photographic guide. That said, if I have some video of snakes in hand, I will put little clips of that in this video. I think with herps and snakes in particular, it's important to provide a sense of tangibility. Uh, you can see the animal in hand, you can get a little bit of size reference, you can see how they act in regards to human. And that's something that drew me to herps, which is reptiles and amphibians in the first place. And lastly, the next most common question I get is, is it poisonous? Uh, really quickly, I want to describe a pet peeve that us snake enthusiasts have between the words poisonous and venomous. We have venomous snakes here in Pennsylvania. Most of the snakes in the world are going to be venomous, not poisonous, with very few exceptions. Basically, the difference is venom has to go into your bloodstream. Poison needs to be ingested. So if you bite something and you die, it's poisonous. If something bites you and you die, it's venomous. So moving on, we have three medically significant venomous snakes here. They're gonna be the last three snakes that I put in this video. And again, I will reiterate that at the time. That said, let's get right in and jump into the 20 or so snakes that Pennsylvania has to offer. First, we start with smaller snakes, and our first species is the eastern worm snake. They grow to nine inches in length and, well, look like a worm. They do not bite, but will try to burrow into your hand as they are fossorial in nature, which means they burrow into the ground. Their tail comes to a sharp point that they will dig into you, but this does not break skin and doesn't hurt, but can startle you. These are harmless and currently listed as a species of concern. Next up is the northern ring neck snake that displays a bright yellow ring around the neck as well as a yellow belly. Sometimes the belly can have black dots or half moons on it. These are harmless, but will musk and poop on you as their best defense. These salamander eaters get to 12 to 16 inches in length. Next up is the northern brown snake, sometimes called the K's snake. This is another inoffensive snake, although it will gape its mouth from time to time. As with all of these small snakes, their favorite mode of defense is musking and pooping on you. These get to between 9 to 13 inches and can be various shades of brown. They love slugs. Sharing the genus with the brown snake is the northern red-bellied snake. These are very similarly shaped to the brown snake, but have a pale neck and a bright red belly that can be orangish, peach, or even very rarely black. These aren't biters either, but do sometimes curl their lip up, looking like they're smiling, and will drag a tooth along your finger. This does not hurt, but it can be startling. Again, harmless, other than such beautiful colors that it can hurt. Rounding out our first group of smaller snakes is the smooth earth snake and will include the subspecies mountain earth snakes. Smooth earths are the rarest snake found in the state. This doesn't include a Kirtland snake, which hasn't been seen in 60 years and I'm not including in this list. Mountain earths are found a bit more often. These harmless snakes grow to nine to 13 inches and are currently a species of concern. I next chose to group the Thamnophis genus together and we'll start it off with the ubiquitous Eastern Garter Snake. These can be found practically everywhere and may be the most often seen snake in the state. Their demeanor can go either way, so please be aware that you may be bitten if you attempt to pick one up. They have a slight weak venom to their saliva that does cause minor swelling or itchiness, but they are not medically significant and they are nothing to fear. 
If you don't want to run the risk of being bit, simply don't pick one up. They usually range to 20 to 28 inches in length. The garter cousin is the ribbon snake, and we have both northern and eastern subspecies in the state. For our purposes, we want to pay attention to the differences between ribbons and garters. The most telltale sign that you have a ribbon is the bright yellow to whitish spot in front of the eye. They also have three well-defined lines running the length of their body and are more slender. In my experience, they seem less bitey than garters. The last Thamnophis species is the state's rarest, the short-headed garter snake. As the name would imply, the head is more stout compared to the other two members of the genus. The adults tend to be the smallest of the three, measuring in at 18 to 26 inches. Their temperament could go either way, but in my experience, they are also less bitey than eastern garter snakes. They are listed as a species of special concern. Next up, I grouped two snakes you will find in the water as they are strong swimmers and their preferred diet lives in the water. Let's start with the rarer queen snake, a species of special concern. They can go either way with temperament, but tend not to bite. They are the smaller of the two, with adults reaching about two feet, maybe a little bit more. They need clean streams with an abundance of crayfish. If you aren't finding crayfish, you probably won't find a queen snake. Now. Northern water snakes are one of the top two contenders for most defensive snakes in the state. These are probably one of the most commonly seen snakes in the state as well. If you don't touch it, you have absolutely nothing to worry about as a snake wants nothing to do with you. If you grab it, that's on you. They will bite and they will bite again and they will keep on biting. To add insult to injury, they may decide to smear some poop in your wounds as well. While this sounds horrifying, they are absolutely harmless, and as long as you wash any bites thoroughly, you will be fine. Some adults can be massive, up to 55 inches in some cases. Really pretty belly on this northern water snake, Nerodius sipidon, sipidon. I'm just gonna release and back into the wild. Harmless snakes, everybody. Everybody thinks they're water moccasins, which is ridiculous because they come up only as far as South Central Virginia. Let's look at the two green snakes we have in the state next. First up, the smooth green snake. Given the smooth name because its scales are smooth as opposed to keeled, which you will see shortly. This species of concern is an insect specialist. These are mouth gapers too, but I have found hundreds and don't know anyone who has actually been bitten. They are terrestrial in nature, meaning they like to move along the ground, compared to the other green snake that is much more arboreal, meaning it likes to climb in vegetation. But first, check out the scales of the rough green snake. You can see the ridges there. That's how it got its name. Rough green snakes are listed as endangered and are the second most rarely observed snake in the state, occupying only small fragmented areas of habitat. Much like the smooth green, the rough green loves insects it just goes about finding them in the vegetation as opposed to on the ground. They can get from 22 to 32 inches in length and have one of the coolest demeanors when held. However, in the state of Pennsylvania, you should not hold endangered species. If you are fortunate enough to see one, you are one of only a few and should soak in the experience. Next up, my absolute two favorites. First, the Eastern Milk Snake. Milk snakes are highly variable and you cannot depend on color to identify them. I have tried to include some variety in my pictures here. They get from 24 inches to 52 inches in length and are found all over the state. They are a harmless snake, but they can be bitey, but I find someone with experience on how to handle them does better with not being bitten. Sometimes they will coil and strike, other times chew and not let go. It hardly hurts and really is a non-event. I find I scratch my legs up more in a day of hiking over what any non-venomous snake will do to you. I could do an hour long video on Eastern hognose snakes and still not be bored. They're the dramatic champions of the snake world, probably in the entire continent. While they do possess a mild venom meant for toads, I have never been bitten and only know one 
person who has, and that was probably an accident. That said, they will employ a myriad of tricks to deter you from messing with them. They hood like cobras, they hiss and puff, they gape their mouths, they curl their tails. If none of that works, they will feign death, rolling around upside down and possibly puking and pooping all on themselves before staying belly up with their tongues hanging out. This species of concern is easily, easily my favorite snake and come in an incredible amount of variety in both colors and temperament. Sadly, this is meant to be a crash course in Pennsylvania snakes, so let's move on to Pennsylvania's two big black snakes. The fake striking. And you have the other fruit, which is this guy who's been dead for about 15 minutes. The Northern Black Racer is big, sleek, and fast. If you see a darting black snake, you had a racer. If you are able to get your hands on it, be prepared for blood. They're the water snake's biggest rival in defensive biting. They will bite almost nonstop until you release them. And did I mention the poop? Yes, they also like to smear that in the wounds. Again though, they are harmless and you need not worry more than washing with soap and water. They typically grow to 60-ish inches with some monsters sometimes being found. Let's move on to the Eastern rat snake and I'll explain some differences. The Eastern or black rat snake is extremely similar in appearance. If you can see the eyes, I explain rat snakes as having puppy dog like big round eyes while racers have a raised keel above the eye, almost giving it a sinister look. Rat snakes also have slightly keeled scales while racers are smooth. Rat snakes also retain some slight white modeling from their patterns as juveniles while racers do not. Please note in both species, they look extremely different as young individuals. Their demeanor is also way different. Rat snakes meander. They are methodical in their movements. They are also very skilled climbers. They are our largest snakes and can regularly attain lengths of six feet or more. If you were to grab one mid body, it would be more prone to wrap around you and climb up your arm as opposed to biting you. That said, they can sometimes be bitey and usually will just clamp down once or twice and quickly release. While startling, it's just a series of pinpricks and nothing to worry about. And now we've reached our venomous species. All three of these are medically significant and you do not, I repeat, you do not want to be bitten. They are not to be feared, just respected. Like a loaded gun on a table, they have only potential and if you don't mess with it, nobody will be hurt. The Northern Copperhead has a triangular head and elliptical eyes like all three venomous species. It can attain lengths of 24 to 36 inches. It seems to be the most snappy of the three, but do not test that theory. Observe and enjoy. It is a species of concern in the state and while numerous, probably has that designation thanks to the historical persecution of venomous snakes. Please remember, all snakes have their niche in the ecosystem. They all belong. The Eastern Massasauga is easily the rarest of the three venomous species and is actually the third least encountered snake in the state. It belongs to the pygmy rattlesnake genus and measures in at about 18 upwards to 36 inches. That's pretty rare though. It is only found in the western part of the state in about four distinct fragmented areas and as such is only one of two snakes to be listed as endangered in the state. And finally, the most legendary, most romanticized, and too often most maligned snake in the state, the fabled timber rattlesnake. While they come in different color phases, it's not hard to distinguish this from any other snake in the state thanks to its rattle. Sure, Massasaugas have rattles too, but you most likely have to actively be looking for one of them. Timbers are extremely docile, but I must warn that you do not want to tempt fate with a large venomous pit viper. This species of concern grows to 36 up to 60 inches in length. If you cross paths with a timber rattlesnake, please enjoy the moment, give it its distance and respect, and walk away knowing you have spent time with one of nature's evolutionary miracles.
Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the snakes as much as I do. It's, it's my life's work, it's my passion. Uh, for more information, check out paherps.com. That's P-A-H-E-R-P-S.com. That'll be in the description. And also, I would implore you that if you find any herp in the wild here in Pennsylvania, whether it be a reptile or an amphibian, consider donating the data to paherpsurvey.org. It's a 10-year database project that helps the state determine the population and use it to better make better decisions about land use in the future. Thanks for watching guys and step into the outdoors.